King Henry is widely known for disposing of his many wives and breaking ties with the Roman Catholic Church. But did you know he is also an avid equestrian? Although obviously overshadowed by his more brutal deeds, he deserves some credit for bringing an interest to the sport of dressage and elevating the quality of horses in England. Today we are talking about one of the least talked about aspects of the well-known king. Henry VIII is one of the most well-known figures in history. He's had countless books, television shows, and movies made about him. Most people know his general story. But in case you need a refresher, he was a king who went through many wives, ended up unhappy with most of them, and disposed of them in different ways. He was on wife number six when he died. He's also famously known for separating from the Catholic Church in Rome, which put himself as head of the church in England. Henry, being the king's son, had a noble upbringing. He was actually a second son, so he was not the assumed heir, and much of his schooling was regarding the life he would lead in the church. But because of this, he wasn't as shielded in his childhood as the heir was. He had a bit of freedom to live, and he spent much of his time growing up doing the usual rich people hobbies, hawking, riding horses, hunting, jousting, and racing. Eventually, when his brother Arthur died, he did become the heir, so his life wasn't quite as free, but he still rode horses. It was important to know how to ride a horse so he could lead armies, show himself to the people, and of course move around the country. At the time, horses were a necessity for life, used for either transportation, warfare, or farm work. They hadn't figured out how to be the pampered animals they are today. At age 18, Henry became the King of England, and he would reign until he died at age 55. Once he was king, he was able to do just about anything he wanted. Minus divorcing his wife, although he fixed that later. And one of the things Henry chose to do is ride horses. He didn't just ride out of need, he genuinely enjoyed it. He had a stable of up to 200 horses, many of them imported from other parts of Europe. It was said that the way to his heart was to gift him a horse. He received many from the lords of his court or as gifts from other kingdoms. On one occasion, Queen Catherine asked her father to send the king, my lord, three horses, one a Jeanette, the other from Naples, and the other Sicilian, because he desires them much and has asked me to beg your highness for them, and also to command them be sent by the first messenger that comes here. Now Henry rode extensively, and everyone knows you aren't a true rider until you fall off. <gasps> Henry definitely fell off. It's speculated that the reoccurring head trauma contributed to the brutal treatment of his subjects as he grew more prone to accusing them of treason and beheading them. His most famous fall was when Henry was 44, he was participating at a jousting tournament at Greenwich Palace. He was wearing a full suit of armor and riding a powerful horse. He lunged forward and struck his opponent's lance. However, the lance shattered and pieces flew back in Henry's face. He was knocked unconscious and both he and his horse fell. Eustace Chaboys, the Spanish ambassador to England, wrote of the accident. Henry suffered a broken nose, a contused face, and a lance wound in the thigh. The accident would have a significant impact on the king's life. It's been debated whether or not it caused his personality to change, but it was certainly the beginning of the end for Anne Boleyn, his second wife. A few months later, she would be accused of adultery and witchcraft and beheaded, and the injuries Henry sustained would cause complications for the rest of his life. Henry loved riding so much, he had riding masters come from Italy to teach him how to ride. They brought the concept of riding dressage. Dressage is a French word which literally means training, but the more practical definition would be that dressage means teaching your horse to make movements based on the position of your legs, the balance of your seat, or the pressures applied by the legs and hands. Different combinations of all these commands are instructions for the well-trained horse. It is said that dressage is based on the movements that one might use in the battlefield, but many of these movements show off the horse's underbelly, which is only advisable if someone is hankering to lose the battle. A very bold strategy. So while basic dressage may have started from the needs of warfare, dressage developed into more seeing what the depths of a relationship with a horse and what their obedience could create. Henry loved this idea, and although there wasn't really a practical need for him to know this much about riding, he relentlessly pursued it. He was devoted to the sport. He would train for hours and adapted the new methods of training, using praise and kindness, rather than pain and intimidation, which was a huge step forward in those days. Henry had always been a showman, and this extended to his horses. He would show off his skills at every opportunity, particularly at tournaments, where he would perform what was described as supernatural feats. 
including a thousand jumps in the air, or fly rather than leap to the delight and ecstasy of everyone. As many equestrians know, a well-bred horse can vastly enhance the riding experience, and Henry felt the same. When Henry first came to the throne, the quality and quantity of horses was low, having been decimated by the War of the Roses. His father, Henry VII, had previously begun an effort to improve the quality of England's horses by prohibiting the export of mares under three years old or above a certain value, and all stallions of any value. People mostly ignored this law, though, so Henry VIII started enforcing it. Henry's people looked all over Western Europe, Turkey, Syria, and the Barbary Coast for quality horses. He was especially fond of Barbary horses, who made excellent cavalry horses. Henry created a state breeding program, requiring horse breeders to follow these guidelines. Stallions must be over 15 hands high, and mares must be at least 13 hands high. Any animal not fitting these guidelines must be destroyed. Unfortunately, these guidelines caused many horses to be killed. Even wild horses on the moors were rounded up and destroyed. Luckily, some of the ponies there did survive by avoiding capture, and they are the ancestors to many of the native breeds in Britain today. Despite really wanting to improve the quality of horses in England, it happened way too slowly for Henry to see it in his lifetime. But even after his death, it was commented that the horses in the royal studs were not that great. That island produces a greater number of horses than any other region in Europe. But the horses being weak and of bad wind, fed merely on grass, being like sheep and other cattle kept in the field or pasture of all seasons, they cannot stand much work, and they would do better if they were fed. The breeding laws that Henry enacted led to the creation of the Great English Horse, a larger horse bred for size, strength, and stamina. The breed is now essentially extinct, but feel free to say something below if you know one of these horses personally, and the Shire breed of horse is believed to have originated from them. Henry was a complicated man. He made a lot of really brutal decisions, hurt and killed many people and horses alike, but he did have a love of horses and riding. He tried to improve the quality of horses in England, in his brutal way, and rode both for the pleasure of it and, of course, for his own glory. He's an interesting figure in history, and one that will be remembered and talked about for a long time to come. <laughs>